All right, so let's talk about how the body uh, responds to this atherosclerotic uh, plaque as it's as it's growing, as it's hardening. You can see down here that um, that first, you know, that stage two lesion or that that fatty streak, the first phase of atherosclerosis, really can can uh, begin quite young. Um, it began to show, you know, in the late teen, early twenties, again, you're not going to necessarily have symptoms here um, because there's still quite a lot of room for the blood to flow. Um, but you're still on your way to, you know, moving through these stages, which we really, really don't want. So the body can kind of compensate for that, uh, the effect on blood flow, at least. So if you look here, we've got this kind of, you know, newborn baby, perfect, artery, blood is flowing through, there's no plaque, nothing. Now, obviously, we just talked in the earlier videos about how long it takes to get from here, where there's just, you know, a little injury to, you know, here, where you have, um, let's say this is basically, you know, a fibrous, uh, there's already plaque, there's already a cap here, you know, so on, but the, where the blood flow is actually being not fully occluded, but definitely strongly affected by the growth of these plaques. Um, depending how long it takes for that growth to happen, the body can and, and does respond. And what it does is it grows these, it literally grows extra um, vessels, extra blood vessels to basically bypass that area. So you can see a, this is a really good, I really like this image because um, you can see here in the second picture, you've got some collateral circulation. That's what this is called, this collateral circulation. So it's around uh, or collateral to the, the, the main uh, circulation, right? It's built up around it. You can see it's not, you know, it's there here, but by the time, uh, for some people, by the time this is fully occluded like this, they have so much collateral circulation that it actually doesn't affect the blood flow um, to the myocardium at all or very, very little. So all of these areas um, that are being fed by this flow are still being fed because the blood is just traveling around like this. Now, not everybody is, I guess, as good at, at growing these, um, these vessels. Uh, and just in case it shows up in a test, um, the term for that, for, for growing blood vessels is angiogenesis. It's written right here. So angio meaning uh, vessel, blood vessel, vein, what have you. Genesis is beginning, right? So um, depending on, like some people have, uh, inherited a predisposition for angiogenesis and others don't have um, as much of a predisposition. So genetically, some people are better at growing uh, uh, new vessels than other people. Um, also, again, it does depend on how long this process takes. If the, the slower this process from here to here, the more time the body has to build these collateral roots around, um, like around the lesion. So there are some cases of more of a rapid onset of uh, like a blockage, uh, for example, a coronary spasm, um, often in familial hypercholesterolemia, which we'll talk about later, uh, it comes on a little bit faster and there isn't enough time for that collateral circulation to develop. So I just want you to be able to kind of think it through because again, oftentimes your tests aren't going to ask you flat out questions about what is angiogenesis? When is it happening? When is it not happening? Um, they're going to want to know that you can, you know, those things, of course, but that you can apply them to kind of what's happening in the body. So if somebody has uh, a low predisposition for angiogenesis and um, their ischemia or sorry, like this, this process is happened very, very quickly. Um, what will that mean? Well, they won't have all of this collateral circulation. And when eventually this lumen will become completely occluded, what is going to happen? You have an infarct, right? Where you can no longer get 
blood to this area here. Uh, there's no collateral circulation and, and this is blocked completely. Um, and eventually the cells on the other side of that, on the like distal to that occlusion will die. And we'll talk more about how that happens when we talk about stroke, um, because it has its own little, you know, pathogenesis or patho to it. Um, but for now, this is a really good question uh, for exams, um, just about how, how angiogenesis works and how it can uh, like compensate for um, occlusions that have formed. So let's talk about uh, thrombus formation. And remember we, we've, uh, you know, we talked about during the third phase, how that complicated lesion can quote unquote, grow a thrombus that can rupture or what have you, and how that we would call that a complicated lesion. So I think, um, just heads up, this clotting cascade stuff uh, can be very complicated, but you do not need to have all of this, for example, all of this memorized at all. I don't want you to look at this and get overwhelmed. Just put it here so that I think it gives you a better understanding of how um, how we go from, you know, this fatty plaque to a thrombus and or an embolus and then, you know, a stroke or an MI. Um, I needed it to make sense. So I drew this out. Uh, the likelihood of you being asked a question about necessarily specific to the clotting cascade is probably, uh, you know, slight, but let's go through it anyway. Or at least what we need to know. We're not going to go too deeply through it. So what's really important to know is that um, in that, uh, let's just draw this blood vessel here again, right? So in that lumen, remember we talked about there's all these layers, right? And remember I said right underneath that, right underneath those endothelial cells, that layer, you have that basement membrane that is made up of collagen, right? And I also said that once we get that fatty plaque has, you know, grown up so far. We've got these foam cells that have built and eventually this plaque, sorry, this collagen forms in a cap above it, right? To kind of, you know, solidify it, hold it in there. It's really that collagen uh, that is a, a main stimulator for the thrombus formation. So normally we, our platelets are flowing. And again, I, I, we talked about this, right? What's flowing through this lumen is your red blood cells, your white blood cells and your plasma. And inside of your plasma, you have um, all of these little uh, uh, proteins and heads up, uh, <laughs> they are these, a lot of them are these things, this uh, prothrombin, um, uh, fibrinogen, um, factor eight, these things that are already, those are kind of the proteins already floating around in your plasma. In addition to that, we have platelets that are kind of flowing around inside of your plasma. Um, platelets are kind of not really even a whole cell. They're kind of like a little pieces of a cell. Um, and they really only stick together when there's some kind of stimulator present. And in this case, it's that collagen that has really, you've got collagen underneath that is not supposed to be inside of the lumen. When you have that collagen um, kind of built up inside of the lumen, um, as the platelets move by, inside of this, inside of this, you know, lumen, they begin to stick. So I'm just going to draw, I just want to draw it this way a little bit. So if this is the wall, top wall, okay, and this is the bottom kind of wall of the vessel, right, and your blood is throat flowing through like this, um, and you've got this, uh, you know, atherosclerotic plaque kind of here. Sorry, I'm not an artist at all, in case you weren't aware. Um, and so now we've got these, these platelets that are normally kind of, you know, just kind of going through are now being attracted to this uh, collagen here, right? And so they will start to basically stick um, to the collagen 
and they form what we call a platelet plug. Okay. Now that's there. Um, that process is there in case, you know, you have a lumen like this and it gets, it's broken, right? Uh, there's a, some kind of injury. We don't want the blood to be pouring out of it. So the body has this way of, right, you've got all this collagen under here. So the body automatically, uh, those platelets will be attracted to that collagen and they will stop um, here and stick here and form this kind of platelet um, plug, right? Of course, that platelet plug is not really very stable. We talked about that, when, or we will talk about it when we talk about stroke. Um, and and um, even in inflammation, we talked about that fibrin plug, um, or sorry, platelet plug, and how it needs that fibrin to hold the clot together. Um, and so in order to get that fibrin, if you look down at this clotting cascade here, um, here, let me just, at this clotting cascade here, you'll see at the very, very bottom what, what has been basically released out of that entire, you know, clotting cascade is fibrin. Fibrin, again, is this kind of spider webby stuff that if you, if you look at this pink stuff in here as platelets, the fibrin is what holds it together. It's those spider webs that kind of solidify that platelet plug um, and make it nice and solid. Um, so generally, so that healing can, can begin on top of that. Um, in this case, what we've got is, you know, basically a, a large uh, thrombus forming where we don't necessarily need it to form. It's gonna be forming up here and so, kind of the, like this picture, um, kind of makes more sense now, right? You can see where uh, where that collagen has kind of been released and has attracted those platelets and the platelets have all aggregated or stuck together because of the clotting cascade. Now, um, some of the slides that uh, I was looking at kind of had both of these you know, these clotting cascades in them. So I use this one here. I just prefer it um, for me because it shows what's affected by warfarin and what's affected by heparin. It just helps me. Um, but let's just, let's just look. This one kind of is a little more simplistic. So, so here you've got this blood vessel injury. And again, in this case, it's not necessarily injury. It's the buildup and that fibrous plaque uh, and fibrous collagen cap. So again, you've got that collagen exposure. So what happens immediately, you're going to have platelet adhesion. It's the collagen that causes the platelets to stick to that spot. Um, and at the same time, that collagen is going to trigger this clotting cascade. Don't worry, we're not going through the entire clotting cascade, but you can see here, it's the intrinsic and extrinsic cascade. Uh, we're not going to talk about that for this, this video, but what it ends up doing is it ends up releasing thrombin and then fibrin and the fibrin will stabilize that plug, right? So um, again, we've got that collagen, it's attracted the platelets, they've adhesed. Part of what they do once they group together like that is they begin to... Um, I don't know if I say break down, but the phospholipid, like if you look at these platelets here, the cell membrane of a platelet is the same, same, it's not a full cell, but the, 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 the it still has those bilayer of phospholipids, right? That break down the phospholipids into the arachidonic acid. Don't panic. Uh, we talked about arachidonic acid and this, this uh, it's called the cyclooxygenase pathway in the inflammation video. So if you need to go back and take a look at that. We talked about it when we talked about um, um, ASA and uh, clopidogrel and so on, um, or COX-1 and COX-2 inhibitors, if you remember. If you can go back and take a look at that, it talks a little bit more about this. Uh, in the meantime, what you need to know for this, uh, when we're talking about atherosclerosis, is that Yes, it's triggering this whole, you know, uh, this whole coagulation cascade, which is this thing over here, which we 
right there, okay? Which you don't need to know all of those things. Um, but it's also part of that kind of part of that cascade is this breakdown, this, this cyclooxygenase pathway that basically in the end ends up with, in this case, we're looking at uh, uh, the thromboxane, right? If you look here on this chart, it's just listed here. It's, it's just this kind of square is this whole arachidonic acid thing breakdown that we've learned before. And basically all that does is it causes further platelet aggregation um, and the more of a platelet plug that is then stabilized by the fibrin that has been created by this entire pathway that has started up here, okay? Don't panic. <laughs> It's a lot of scribbles and a lot of drawing, but what you need to, to, to really understand uh, for, you know, for the purposes of this unit um, and really even for the NCLEX is just the idea that when you have this atherosclerotic plaque building up, it's the collagen that stimulates platelet adhesion, right? And that platelet adhesion, uh, uh, you know, causes um, or releases, you know, further mediators. You do not need to memorize these. Just the idea that it's it's kind of a positive uh, feedback system where it keeps building and building and building. And you build this platelet plug, and um, you know, this platelet plug is then stabilized by you know the clotting cascade. The reason those are important is because many, many, many of the drugs that we use to prevent, uh, you know, coronary events are aimed at um, preventing this whole process from happening. Because if you look back here, you know, this isn't necessarily the dangerous phase. It's, it's this that's dangerous. So we want to prevent this from happening. Um, and a lot of that will have to do with inhibiting somewhere on this path or this path or this path, inhibiting that uh, thrombus formation. Um, because again, once that thrombus forms, yes, it can occlude the artery that it's in, but it can also break off and occlude other arteries. And we were gonna talk about what happens um, when that happens and that, that thrombus or that embolus um, travels to the brain uh, next week. Um, for now, so, so remember back here, I think in the first video, we kind of talked about this glycoprotein 2B and 3A receptors. Um, basically, this, this stage here of the platelets aggregating together or sticking together is, is what that was, what, what we were talking about at this complicated lesion point um, is that point in the coagulation cascade where the collagen here and here that has been released has attracted all of the, the, the platelets, but the platelets need to stick together. And the way they stick together is by using these uh, glycoprotein receptors that um, basically attach to fibrinogen that then pull all of the, the platelets together like this. Um, and so that's kind of what this was talking about. I think it seemed really confusing when we talked about it in the first video. Um, but now I think after going through kind of how that thrombus is formed, it makes a little bit more sense um, that, you know, here we've got this collagen exposure leading to platelet adhesion. And it's those receptors that cause those platelets to stick to each other. Um, and the reason, again, that that's important is that we have medications that um, specifically target these receptors and close these receptors off so that um, the platelets cannot uh, aggregate or, or stick together. So hopefully that um, isn't too insanely confusing. Um, if, if you're having trouble and you uh, want to go over any of those things, you can uh, just shoot me an email. Um, it's lauren at uh, learningwithlulu.com. Um, 
And I think what we'll do is we'll really that concludes kind of the straight pathogenesis of atherosclerosis. Um, it's the foundation for what we're going to talk about in the next few weeks, which is again stroke, um, but also uh, um, sorry, acute coronary syndromes uh, and STEMI, STEMI, and so on. So it's really, really important that you have kind of a, a basic understanding of this patho. And that's why I've taken like so much time to just go over each stage one at a time. If you look back at this video, you're going to see that a lot of it was repetition. Um, and that's purposeful so that, you know, you're kind of building on what you're learning as we go. Um, in the next video, we will talk about, um, sorry, about uh, cholesterol and low density and high density lipoprotein and um, give you what you need to know to pass whatever exam you have on that content. So we'll see you in the next video.